The height of a helicopter in feet is given by the equation s of t equals 600 t minus 2 t cubed after t minutes. Let's take a look at another question about this helicopter. So the next question we're going to ask is what is the change in position of this helicopter from 9 to 12 minutes? So what you need to know is change in position, there's a word for that, it's displacement. We're going to see why displacement and total distance traveled aren't the same thing. We're going to see how they're different. Now notice I've underlined 9 to 12 because these are important numbers we're going to use to solve this problem. So again, we're going to do the same step. We're going to do the same steps for all these motion problems. That way, you can get comfortable with knowing the exact procedure for solving each one. So this is what is given algebraically, right? And there's actually two more things that's given. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, and the next steps. Let's take a look. So since they said it's from nine to twelve minutes, when we go to step two, we want to convert what is given into algebraic expressions. So we know that t is equal to 9 and t is equal to 12. Okay, and again, the reason we know that is because when we go and read the question, it says from 9 to 12 minutes. Okay, and so we can also talk about change in position in the next step three, but for right now, we're just converting what they gave us in the sentence to an algebraic expression. An algebraic just means more or less an equation or, or a statement. Step three, convert the verbally stated question into an algebraic expression. So if we're talking about the displacement from 9 to 12, what we're really trying to figure out is s of 12 minus s of 9. Okay? What we want to do is we want to find its position at after uh, 12 minutes and subtract its position after 9 minutes. And that will give us its change in position. Just remember, when you find the difference of two things, it, gets you, it gives you the change in that thing, okay? So, um, more or less, what we're trying to find is the change in y, right? Uh, if you were looking at the graph of the function, which we'll look at later. Okay, step four, it says map out the relationship between position, velocity, acceleration. We're going to keep doing this because I really think it's going to help you get a grasp conceptually on what's going on here. So again, the way that map works is it goes from position, the derivative of that is velocity, the derivative of velocity is acceleration. Uh, now the question is, are we going to be using the derivative here? Okay, well, no, because we just want to find s of 12 minus s of 9, but I'm going to keep writing this map out because most motion problems are not this simple. They require the derivative, so the more you see this, the better and more successful you're going to be with these motion problems. Take a look at step 5. As solve the problem using either initial value or derivative procedures. Well, they gave us the initial values of s of 9 and s of 12, right? Uh, or at least they told us that's what t was. So we can plug those into the position equation and solve this problem. So let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, we're going to find what s of 9 is, which means the helicopter's position after 9 minutes. We're going to do that by plugging it into the Position equation. Again, no derivative needed. We're basically just trying finding the change in y, right? So we don't need the derivative for that. Let's go ahead and figure out what s of 9 is. So I got 3,942. That means that after 9 minutes, the helicopter is almost 4,000 feet up in the air, almost a mile up. Pretty wild, right? Okay, next up. We want to figure out s of 12. So we're going to do the similar thing here with the same equation and figure out what s of 12 is. All right, so we see that after 12 seconds, when we plug into the original equation, position equation, we get 3,744. So from 9 to 12 seconds, the helicopter has gone down. Now, I want to, I want to make something clear here. The, the helicopter might not have been descending the whole time. It might have gone up after 10 minutes and then came back down. So never make any assumptions with math and especially with calculus and motion problems because you really don't know until you prove that. And the way to prove that would be, by the way, the derivative would tell you when its velocity changed and started going from up to down. But anyways, we will look at that at another time. So now all we have to do is figure out s of 12 minus s of 9 and that will give us our change in position or again, the word for that is displacement. So after we subtract the two, we get 198. So that means that from 9 to 12 minutes, 
the helicopter's position changed by 198 feet. Again, its total distance traveled might have been different. I mean, it could have gone up at, after 10 minutes. It could have gone up and then back down, and we would have to add that uh, to the total number, meaning it traveled more. But we're just saying that the difference between its position from 9 to 12 minutes is 198 feet. Another way to talk about displacement before we go to the verbal answer is to imagine running around a track. Your total distance traveled is however long the track is, but your displacement would be zero simply because when you run around a track, you end up where you started with that. So there is a difference between displacement and total distance, and right now, change in position uh, indicates displacement. And I'm just going to write that word out again because to me, you know, the more you uh, kind of look at the difference between displacement and total distance and how it, how it means in terms of calculus and position equation, uh, the more clear these concepts will be for you. So again, this 198 is a dis displacement number. Later on, we will talk about total distance traveled. Okay, so final step is to answer verbally. So basically what that means is we're going to just take this 198 figure and write a sentence about what it is we are indeed answering. So let's go ahead and write that out. Now, before we do that, you might have noticed this. I did forget one little thing, which is negative, okay? Uh, because S of 12 is smaller than S of 9, and so I'm glad I pointed that out. That means that the helicopter actually dropped. So let's go ahead and write this sentence out. So my final answer is going to be for step 6, you always want to write a sentence. The helicopter dropped 198 feet from T equals 9 and T equals 12 minutes. Doesn't mean that at some point it, it didn't rise. It might have rose and then dropped again. We're just saying that its change in position or its displacement is 198 feet comparing T equals 9 to T equals 12. That's it for this displacement question in regards to the helicopter. If you have any other questions about it, let me know.